Hello fellow bird nerds and welcome back to another video. Today we are talking all about parrot anatomy facts. There are loads of unique adaptations that parrots have that make them incredible but today I wanted to give you a little sampler of some of the cool things that they have about their anatomy. If you have any parrot anatomy facts of your own I'd love for you to join in the conversation down in the comments and share with the rest of the community. But without further ado let's tell you some cool things all about parrots. When your parrot goes to the vet, they'll have a wellness exam where your avian vet will check them all over and one of the things they'll do is look inside your parrot's mouth, right to the back. Now why are they doing that? They're looking for this structure which looks quite alien. <laughs> this is a coronal papillae and this is at the back of your bird's throat and it is spiky in a healthy bird. And what does this mean? Why are they looking for it? When your parrot's coronal papillae is spiky like this and looking nice and healthy, this means that they are having a diet that is uh, appropriate in vitamin A and they are assimilating that vitamin A. If the back of your bird's mouth looks kind of blunted, there's no spiky structures there, nothing like that, it's, it's really blunted, that means that your bird is having a very low vitamin A diet and that means they're quite unhealthy. A lot of different physical aspects that you can actually see in your bird's anatomy when it changes to show they're unhealthy is due to a lack of vitamin A. So I highly, highly suggest reviewing your bird's diet to make sure they're actually getting vitamin A and bioavailable in that sense. So it's from fresh foods, not formulated foods, because fresh foods are going to have all the other micronutrients that make it bioavailable and able to be absorbed by the body. So do check out your bird's diet and make sure that they're getting the appropriate levels of vitamin A in their body. The unfortunate thing is, once you do switch your bird over to an, a diet that has appropriate levels of vitamin A, this doesn't really change. The colour might change a little bit, but the structure doesn't grow back to be spiky. Once it's blunted, it's blunted. So make sure that your bird doesn't get to this stage. Have you ever looked at your bird's nostrils and thought, oh my goodness, they're blocked, what am I going to do? And you start panicking and then you look a little bit later in the day and then they're perfectly clear. Was it a blockage or was it part of their anatomy? Inside a parrot's nose, they have a structure made up of proteins called the operculum. This is something that helps to block out dust and debris. It acts like a bit of a flap. Sometimes it's a bit more closed and sometimes it's a bit more open, but it's a way of kind of trying to stop some of that dust and debris getting into their nostrils. And it's a very useful adaptation because of course, our parrots have very sensitive respiratory systems. And I do have a whole video all about that as well. Now, why do I bring this up? Well, firstly, of course, it's interesting, but secondly, I really highly suggest not going digging around in your bird's nostrils if you think they have a blockage. I see this all the time, people going with toothpicks and cotton buds. It's a really terrible idea because whilst you might think that there's a blockage of dust or feather down or something, actually, it might be part of their body and you could be doing far more harm than good by digging around in there when you don't need to. So if you think that your bird has a blocked up nostril, the first thing you can do is run the shower really hot in your bathroom with the door shut, turn off the shower and then take your bird in a travel carrier into the bathroom. And then all of that steam can sometimes help to open up nostrils and it's just really good for their respiratory system as well. Just make sure you're not using any shampoos or shower gels at the same time. Just steam in the bathroom is very good for an animal's respiratory system. Now, if that doesn't work, maybe you can try offering your bird a wash if they want to. That can sometimes help to encourage them to sneeze and uh, clear that blockage or give them some petty pets. That can sometimes help. But if none of those things help, what am I going to suggest? Of course, going to your avian vet to get them to check it out. Do they need to have a like a sinus flush or something? Is it just the operculum and we are paranoid parrot par parents if you're anything like me? But no, we want to be really careful that we are not doing anything silly. And that's why I'm making this video so you can be more aware of your parrot's body and what might be going on in there. Many of us will know that our parrots at the base of their tail have something called the uropedial gland, also known as the oil gland or the preen gland. And when your bird is preening, you'll often see them kind of pinching a little wick-like feather at the base of their tail and then rubbing uh, this oil all over their body. It helps keep their feathers waterproof, keep them in good condition. There's also some suggestion that actually it helps with the absorption production of vitamin D3 when your bird is out in the sun. It has a lot of different functions and it's really, really important to keep your parrot's feathers healthy by keeping a healthy oil gland as well. But what's interesting about them is that a couple of parrot species don't actually have one. So Pionis parrots, Amazon parrots and Hyacinth macaws don't have a uropedial gland, so they don't have an oil gland. And they mostly rely more on the kind of powdery down fluff and dust and things that's all in their feathers to keep them in really good condition. Scientists don't really know why these specific parrots 
don't have the urepedial gland because there doesn't seem to be a correlation between the environment they live in or the climate or the elevation. We haven't quite worked out yet, but I think it's really interesting. It's one of those sort of unsolved mysteries of the parrot world. One day we'll find out and then we'll know. But for the meantime, it's really interesting that those specific species of parrot don't actually have this oil gland. Now, if your bird does have an oil gland and you are one of those uh, parrot parents who has that kind of species, like Connie's here for example, you want to make sure once again that your bird is staying nice and healthy. Sometimes the oil glands can get blocked. It is very rare and it's usually due to poor husbandry and diet, lack of bathing, genetics and of course, like I mentioned already, is vitamin A. Vitamin A is so crucial to your parrot's overall health and well-being. So ensuring they are getting a natural source of vitamin A is very, very important. Would you guys like to see a standalone video about vitamin A? Because I think it's so important. Let me know down in the comments. But you can find vitamin A in leafy greens and lots of orange and red um, vegetables like peppers as well as pickles his favourite and scampi. So there are loads of foods that you can offer with vitamin A to keep your birds nice and healthy. Did you know that your parrot has three sets of eyelids? Have you ever seen that before? They have the top eyelid and the bottom eyelid like we do, but they have a third eyelid. And this is one that goes across the eye and it's translucent. So it's more kind of see-through, but not quite. And it's really interesting when you finally see it. It's quite hard to do. Sometimes you need to film your bird in slow motion or you might catch a picture of them and suddenly think, what is that over my bird's eye? but it's a really interesting structure and it's very good for their adaptations. The nictitating membrane helps to keep your bird's cornea, which is the front surface of the eye, moist and clean as well. So they have that tip top uh, vision that helps them to source out all those tasty snacks in the wild and keeps them safe by being able to spot predators from a distance. But the other thing as well, kind of like the operculum, is it can prevent dust and debris from going over their eyes. You know, these guys would be flying around, they'll be head first in the dirt looking for snacks, all kinds of debris could be flying about. So having the nictitating membrane can help to just stop some of that stuff getting in their eyes and getting irritated. It's a very, very useful adaptation. Parrots are not the only animals that have this. Quite a lot of animals, and especially a lot of birds, have this as well. It does help to keep them nice and comfortable. Now to broaden things out, because I'm sure you guys are bird nerds, not just parrot nerds like me, there are other birds in the animal kingdom that use this for different functions. So for example, waterfowl, like your ducks and your geese and things like that, they have the nictitating membrane, not only for the other functions, but also when they're diving underwater looking for their snacks, they can still see, it's kind of like a pair of goggles, so they can dive underwater and still see what they're looking for. Birds like eagles who fly at really high altitudes can have that nictitating membrane over their eyes again stopping that dust and debris and just keeping that cornea moist at higher altitudes where it might dry out a little bit more. And the other really interesting thing is woodpeckers as we know they like to bang their heads against trees um, but what they actually do is they deploy the nictitating membrane just before they hit their head on the tree and this actually prevents injury to their retinas which is at the back of the eye when they are smacking their head against the tree because as you can imagine that's probably not going to be great for their eyes but actually keeping them protected by deploying that nictitating membrane to keep everything where it's supposed to be is a really really cool adaptation. Now let's move on to parrot tongues. Did you know that a parrot's tongue has five bones within it called the hyoid apparatus? It's very unusual to have bones in a tongue but it's really useful for parrots. Now at the very end of their tongue they have a y-shaped bone and this is useful because it allows them to manipulate their food and it becomes almost like a prehensile tongue and that means that it can kind of grip now a lot of people kind of compare a parrot's tongue to like a thumb and it's because it's so adaptable at manipulating objects and foods and things you'll often see if your conyers are anything like mine they will really love to hold something in their hand and lick it and move it around and it's a really interesting adaptation that they have and it helps them to eat different kinds of foods, to play with things, to shred bark. It's really, really interesting to watch them when their little tongues go to town on these different objects that they find really interesting. Now, if you'd like to learn more about parrot tongues, I have loads more facts in the next video that I highly recommend checking out to learn more about your parrot. But in the meantime, from me, Pickles and Scampi, take care and I'll see you in the next one.